guys, how you doing? This is Flying Gato, and I'm here today for another video. Now, today what I wanted to talk about was how this car handles on long road trips. So this weekend, I had to go to Montreal for a bachelor party, and that's about a five and a half hour to six hour, 350 mile uh, trip where I live up to Montreal. And I usually, my, the car that I usually take is the BMW 335D. Now, the 335D is, is very comfortable. I've said it in the review, very comfortable. It's, uh, it gets 42 miles to the gallon, which is amazing. Uh, it's, it's fast, it's comfortable, it's quiet. It's, proves, it's a proven, very good highway cruiser, except for the uh, elbow pad. It's a very good car. It's, it's the perfect car for, for cruising on the highway. Now, the reason I took this car is because I really wanted to see how it performed on a long distance trip, especially during winter. So, on the way up here, I encountered uh, snow, I encountered very, very cold temperatures, and I encountered uh, people that don't know how to drive in the snow. One thing I want to make clear is that in order to have a very good highway driver, you really do need precise steering. So this car has extremely precise steering, and I've said it in my previous reviews. So one thing I want to do, I do want to point out that this car does have extremely, extremely precise steering. What I mean by that is that you know you move it a millimeter to the right, and the car goes a little bit to the right. You move it a millimeter to the left, and the car goes a little bit to the left. So as you can see, it's it's extremely stable and extremely responsive to your driving. I've driven cars that are kind of dead feeling. You know, you kind of move the steering wheel, nothing really happens. To me, that's very fatiguing. You know, you're constantly searching to, to make sure that the wheels go in the right direction. This car pointed exactly where you wanted to go, and that's where it goes. I think that's great. Now, there's one small uh, downside to that, and that's the fact that because it's so precise, you do have to be on point. You can't be sifting around looking for your, your cell phone. You can't, you know, if you don't pay attention to it and you kind of nudge it, you're just going to go that way. So that's one little thing that you do have to keep in mind. But for people that take driving seriously, this is not a big deal. Another thing I want to mention is that there was a lot of snow this weekend. You know, driving up to the Great White North, as we like to call it. They don't call it the Great Great White North for no reason. The frozen North, and there was a lot of snow, and I had to deal with a lot of snow. Let me show you some clips of the snow we had to deal with. Nope, that's not gonna work. Not gonna work. Not do it, do it. Oh. You're gonna hit it, you're gonna hit it. He already hit it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Wow, yep. good job. Man. Nope. You're gonna have. There you go. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yep. I don't think it's gonna work. No, no, he's gonna have to open it. Front wheel drive. Alright, so if you guys can give a push. Yeah. yeah. Push it from the side. Do not push it from there. If he slips down, you're yeah. gonna go with it. Alright. Ready? Just watch your feet. So as you can see, my buddy was also up there. His Honda Fit got stuck. We couldn't get it to his parking garage that he had uh, rented out. So we had to park it on the street. And uh, I drove the car around in, uh, in those conditions. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed. The electronic differential that this car has, it's not a differential at all, but it's, it uses brake, uh, brakes to uh, kind of control the wheels. It, it works very well in the snow. And without it, I think I would've gotten stuck. But not once did the car get stuck. You know, I had to park it in like the snow drift. I parked it in there just fine. No big deal. Again, the backup camera is useless when there's snow on it. When there's any kind of precipitation anywhere near the car, but that's that's fine. You got windows. Um, the car still looks great from the outside. You move all the salt on it. It's white, so it kind of blends in. And um, the, the, the the other problem that I was dealing with, <laughs> like I said. It's about nine degrees 
Fahrenheit up there, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 10 degrees. So, it's a very, very cold climate. And the problem that I had before with this car was that it didn't move fast enough. And I still had that problem. You know, it, about, it takes about five, six minutes of driving before the car starts warming up and starts to heat up the cabin. If you turn it on and you wait for three or four minutes, not even close to getting uh, up to temperature. So you're gonna be pretty cold for the first five to six minutes. And yeah, you, you think that it's not a big deal, but when it's nine degrees in the car, 10 degrees in the car, Fahrenheit, it's very cold. So that just means that the engine is very efficient, which is good, but it's something to keep in mind. Another thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, as we all know, Canada uses kilometers an hour and the US uses miles an hour. Luckily, there's a way to change that. Let me show you. There's a button right here that you convert it to kilometers an hour. You just hold on to it. And there you go. It's that easy. So, in closing, I think this car is a great highway cruiser. Now, here's some room for improvement uh, for people that want to know what things they don't like about uh, the highway manners of this car is, the main thing is the gas tank is a little bit too small for my tastes. I'm used to a 600 mile range on the BMW. This only gives me about 320 mile range. I'm getting about 35 miles to the gallon, which I think is great considering it's so cold. Usually when it gets really cold, you get the, the really terrible winter gas mix, and, and that's okay. But it, 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 35 miles to the gallon is not too bad at all. And, and that gives you about 32, uh, 320 miles to the tank. To most people, that's more than enough, absolutely. But I'm kind of like the type of guy that kind of just wants to cannonball to the place I'm going to. So other than that, I think the, the radio performed really well. The media was really, really well done. The, the, I had Bluetooth going the entire way. It was perfect. I couldn't, I, I, honestly, I, I don't want the touchscreen radio now that I've been using the setup for about uh, three months now. I don't want the touchscreen area. I don't want the, the, the Apple CarPlay, the Android I, I just I, Whatever phone I'm, I'm going to be upgrading to is going to be right on the dash right here. And that's all I'm going to need. Uh, let me show you my setup real quick. So with that setup, you know, you get the cell phone right on top. I love it. It's really good. I mean, you can't get you can't get much better than that. But Mazda, Mercedes, BMW, everyone has a screen attached to the top of the dash. I just attach my phone to the top of the dash. And every two years or so, I get a new phone. So I get a new entertainment system every two years. That's great. The buttons of radio, I love. I mean, it's just perfect for the entertainment purposes. The speakers aren't anything to write home about, but whatever. Now, with all that said, this is a great, great car. Even for long road trips, I can pack anything I want back there. It's very comfortable. It's more than quiet enough. I never had a problem with the noise. So, if you're going to take a long road trip, and get, you know, all you have is this, is, is this car, you're going to do just fine. Another thing I wanted to mention about highway driving in this car is that I do love the one-touch directional lights that I thought only BMWs brought, but this car has. So what I mean by that is you hit it one time for left and it clicks three times. And then you hit it one time for right and it clicks three times. Really awesome to have that. And it's a great addition to this car. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, as always, please post them below. I will do my best to answer every one of them. And I have, I think I've done it. I think I've answered every one of the comments that I've gotten so far. So, like I said, thanks again, guys. And uh, I'll talk to you later.